Good afternoon and welcome to Saturday Sesh. My name is Trey Reckling. I'm the founder and director of Academy of Cannabis Science. And we're really glad to have you here today for a very important subject. Uh, we're here to talk about moms and cannabis, a subject that is often overlooked or whispered or talked about with some bias or a lot of bias. And so we've invited four of our friends that we respect a great deal who we know to have an opinion on cannabis to come and talk to us today. We also know that they all have kids. And so we know, unlike me, I don't have kids, right? So this is about me learning as much as anything today. So I appreciate them and we'd like to get right to it and ask if they would introduce themselves. And uh, we'll start with, I'm gonna go left to right. And Kim Davis, do you mind starting? Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Kim Davis. I'm based out of Washington State, and I am a marketing professional, a licensed uh, Washington State medical cannabis consultant, a military spouse, and a mother of two. So I have two kids, ages 8 and 12. Thank, Thank you for having much. me. Thank you very much. How about Caitlin Ryan? You're next to my left or right. Yeah, I know. I don't usually get another Caitlin, so sorry for that <laughs> confusion earlier. Um, so yeah, my name is Caitlin Ryan. Um, I work mostly in cannabis policy um, here in Washington State, and um, I am a licensee here as well, and um, a mother of four kiddos, um, 19, see if I get this right, 19, 15, 13, and almost 11 on Thursday. Ooh. And um, also special That's needs. Fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. You know, we've got a couple of um, special needs that also, um, including epilepsy, so we can talk a little bit about mm -hmm. the difference of, you know, when, when that is also a part of the conversation with cannabis. And um, I'm so excited to be here um, and chat with all of y'all. Thank you for being here. And next to my left and right is Sue Tan. How you I'm doing, doing, Sue? I am doing very well. This is a perfect way to spin. A Saturday afternoon. Um, I am a co-founder of a Seattle-based, proudly BIPOC and woman-owned um, cannabis and hemp brand called Polite. And um, yeah, I, you'll learn more about me through this conversation. <laughs> Thank you very much. And Evelyn LaChapelle. Yes, um, I am Evelyn LaChapelle, the uh, founder of 87 Months, the Cannabis High Essentials brand. I'm also known as the Weed Lady, and I am the mother of a 13-year-old teenager. <laughs> and so I'm just uh, super happy to be here to share in that experience with other parents um, as we go on this journey of Canna Moms. Excellent. And so, like I said, I've, I've got to, a lot to learn here today. And um, and thank you all. Hopefully, this will kind of be an organic conversation. So if we stray a little bit from the original question, that's fine. Um, I know you all have a lot to share. Would you like to um, talk a little bit about how did you first become involved in cannabis or, or cannabis publicly? Or, or anything you'd like to say, kind of crossing that threshold as a mom or as a cannabis user that probably happened at different times, but. Uh, I can, I can start. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, I have a handful of co-founders and I'm the newbie to the industry. So I, I did not partake when most people did, like in my teenage years, maybe I was like too dorky or whatever, for whatever reason. Um, I didn't, you know, I, it wasn't um, in my social circle and my moment of truth was when my late father um, was battling pancreatic cancer and I just saw what a true medicine it was. And, and from that point on, you know, I, I always grew up around traditional Chinese medicine. So herbs have just always been a natural part of my like healthcare. Um, and I see cannabis in the exact same way like it's part of everybody's toolkit you know um and so about three years ago um i you know i had the opportunity to found to help found this um business um more kind of coming in with a creative lens i have a background in design and user research but um that was when i started like a, getting educated you know about the important, not just like scientific history, but the cultural history of cannabis and, and the global history of cannabis. And I think uh, one thing that I kept coming across was like how women, so many women have such a negative experience in this industry. Um, 
and so yeah I think things like this is like how how can I actually build true community help each other figure out how to navigate you know all all aspects of being in this industry um because I think we are the heart and soul of it maybe even more now so uh than ever cool thank you anyone else I'll go. I'll go next. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I definitely um, used cannabis as a teenager, you know, um, just it's part of the exper experimentation and, and, and growing and learning. Um, but uh, I really didn't, being a military spouse, um, moved a lot. We were overseas for, for several years, so I wasn't able to use it, but I had young children at the time. Um, we moved back to Washington State. I was really looking forward to uh, coming back and, and being able to use cannabis again, just because I knew of the properties from before. Um, but as everybody else, uh, struggled through from uh, 2020 and on, it was, uh, just getting hit from all sides. Um, on top of that, I was, you know, right around 40. So those hormonal shifts for women too, um, I didn't realize I tried to uh, go through a, a course and, um, uh, couldn't concentrate. And my daughter was uh, diagnosed with ADHD years ago. And I kind of started to see some similarities. I'm like, wait a minute. So <laughs> I go to the to my doctor and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm a little concerned. I think I might have ADHD. Um, did some more talking and, and um, you know, digging. And I was diagnosed with um, ADHD, anxiety, and depression, um, which kind of, they all kind of end up usually going uh, hand in hand. But uh, I really struggled and I was self-medicating. Um, and didn't realize I was, but it was actually helping, you know, slow my brain down. Um, I'm just so much happier around my kids. I can laugh. I can relax. I can have dance parties. I can, you know, I realized how much it helped me become a better version of myself and a better mother um, and partner. So I was like, wait a minute, if this is helping me this much and has changed my life this much, why isn't, why aren't more people using it and taking advantage of this plant that people have used for physicians have used for thousands of years. Um, and I'm like, there's so many people struggling and suffering. Why, for what there is something that we can use. So it really, that's what took me down. Um, you know, that little bit of a rabbit hole. I ended up going through the program, um, at the cannabis <laughs> Academy of cannabis science. And so, um, yeah, here I am. I'm just here to normalize, uh, the use of cannabis, um, so that everybody could possibly use it to help them be a better version version of themselves. So, cool. Thank you. And I'll jump in here um, because I wanted to add to what you said, Sue, about like not consuming in your young age, and you know, not being being in the nerd group as a parent. I pray that that's where my daughter ends up, right? Because I I just as 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 early as I tried it, which I think was like 16, I don't recommend that, right? And so kudos to you for avoiding it. But in my adult years, and I'm approaching 40, so I wonder if I'm experiencing the same thing here. Um, it really is like helping me manage life and manage the stressors and manage the emails and the workload. And I jumped into this industry really unplanned. I was incarcerated for depositing cannabis profits. And then the industry just invited me in. And so I, I've, I've just received this, you know, warm welcome in, in a sense of a warm welcome. Um, and I've been able to continue my mission to normalize cannabis consumption. And I appreciate it so much more at this age than I did in college when it was slowing down the pro the process of graduating, right? Um, and so, um, yeah, that's how I landed here and and been normalizing consumption ever since. Thank you, and thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's fascinating listening to the three of you because I'm like, oh, that's familiar, that's familiar, that's familiar. Yeah. Um, and Sue, so actually, same thing. Uh, Washington was legalized as my mom was um, in her end of end of life uh, with pancreatic cancer as well. Oh, wow. And um, I saw for her how how important that medicine was and how resistant she was to utilizing it because of the stigma she carried around with her. Um, that my my brother and I were begging her to to 
you know, if you're it's like out, a role reversal, it's like, please, yeah, exactly. It's like, mom, it, it's, please, it's like, you know, she's like, well, I mean, I just don't want to do it too much. I'm like, that is just not an issue anymore. Like, you don't have to be in this pain. You don't have to, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that was really powerful to me, and that was happening right as Washington legalized, and so, um mistakenly felt like we were going to jump into a great business opportunity at the beginning of legal <laughs> of adult use. Um, if you're in the industry, you know, that's just not how it's working out for a lot of us. <laughs> um, and then shortly thereafter, um, one of my children was diagnosed with epilepsy. And um, it's in it, all of those processes together turned me into an advocate and found that really my aptitude is is in policy and around this plant that I feel so passionate about. Um, and it's been an interesting coming out process uh, in the circles that I move in because, um, you know, to begin with, I always said I was starting a business, um, you know, working on a startup. And, uh, you know, when you say startup, people generally just kind of accept that because they don't want to hear whatever nerdy thing you're about. To <laughs> <unload>. <laughs> um, but, you know, so just very slowly started introducing it that way a little bit by little bit. Um, and especially around, you know, kid activities, like the other parents on the soccer team or whatever, I was always very opaque about what it was that I did because um, I just never knew. And then I sort of slid into, um, well, I don't know how you're going to feel about what I'm about to say next, but um, sort of try to hold space for like if they were going to have a big reaction or not. And even still, I mean, it's been 11, 11 almost 11 years, even still, I'm always kind of reticent in school situations and I'll share with you. I was um, volunteering in my youngest classroom last week and I had introduced myself to the other mom as working in policy and working in politics. And um, we were walking out to the car afterwards. She goes, and I know what you actually do. And she's like, I think it's great. And I, I want you to keep oh, it. Awesome. <laughs> I was like, oh, good, good, good. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. So it's always still a dance. Yeah. For sure. And so many, there's so much depth in all of what you said. So following up on stigma, uh, we know that institutionally, um, not only has racism and gender bias affected the way laws are created and enforced, uh, to Evelyn's example of, of actually getting caught up in that, we know that women are, are often um, treated differently, right? Um, when it comes to substance use, especially through the lens of being a mom. I can't believe that you would be irresponsible enough to use a substance. You know, once upon a time it was alcohol, or it might be smoking. Uh, name your name your your intoxicant, right? Um, so along the lines of stigma, I'm curious about just that. What what Caitlin was talking about coming out. Uh, the first cannabis mom I knew, besides a friend of mine from high school's mom, was. Uh, the mom from weeds right and i was like oh that's so cool right she's just a regular mom doing her thing um but on the down low and um so i'd like to know a little bit about that coming out like are do you we know we're in a bubble being on the west coast all of all of us yeah and so it's you know admittedly a lot easier here than it is for a lot of other people but I, i'm curious about that cover uh, the coming out and and what covering or kind of shifting do you have to do to, do you feel even still to accommodate or to judge your audience? How, how do you still play that, play that game or, or do you not play that game? I've got a funny story about my cover up actually, because I haven't, ironically, the children in the class have figured it out before the parents, I think. And so I don't know what those conversations are like, but my daughter is on Instagram and I made her follow me. And so the kids know I'm the weed lady. <laughs> um, but we went to a high school uh, tour a few weeks back and my daughter came without a jacket. So I had to give her my jacket and my only replacement in the car was a weed lady hoodie. <laughs> and, we, and she's in Catholic school. <laughs> and so it's all these parents. And so my cover up literally was this the whole time. Oh, no. They probably think I'm upset, <laughs> this other, but I'm like this the whole time. And, and I walked through and then another parent and we're talking 
and it comes up in conversation. And by the end of it, he's like, well, do you have a joint for me? And so I give him what I have in my purse. <laughs> and so I'm still covering up because we are in a Catholic school system. And I like, I'm just not there yet. Um, but I don't avoid it when it comes up in conversation, but I'm not showing up to the PTA yet. Like, this is what I do. I'm, I usually am community engagement manager <laughs> um, for, you know, and then if it comes up, but I'm still sort of in the, the cover up. And I think it has a lot to do with the religious aspect of my parenting circle. Hmm. And the weed lady is actually your brand, right? And that's my brand. And I wear it all day. Like when I get up, it's, it's just, it's my comfortable sweatsuit. It's my uniform Monday through Friday. So I try not to get out of the car. If I, you know, when I have to get out of the car to drop her off in the morning. Um, And so it's my earrings, my neck, it all says the weed lady. And so it's even me having to like, okay, taking these off before Mm -hmm. I go into the game. Um, And I do think it's, but it's, the religious aspect. I don't know if I'd be like that in a different setting. And and it's the best grinder in our house, by the way, the weed lady grinder. Thank you. <laughs> by the way, I have heard that, um, Evelyn, from several people who got weed lady grinders uh, when you oh, were nice. here in October, and it's the best. <laughs> okay, I have to go order one then. Yeah, I'm ordering one. Um, well, and I was sharing, you know, before we started this too, um, you know, I'm a single mom now and, uh, that's a contentious relationship with dad and dad has some, um, more conservative, conservative ideas and, um, I'm careful in real life, uh, about who I disclose this information to. Um, but then more broadly in circumstances like this, and then professionally, I think, uh, a, I get to capitalize on being white, um, and then by creating communities of folks, and again, because I'm in politics, that includes legislators, um, you know, and people in power that get to know me as a responsible person in this advocacy work, that keeps me safer um, from him deciding that he wants to file something in the courts that will will harm me and my relationship with my kids. Um, and But that's scary and it will hang over my head until the last one turns 18. I've got seven more years to go. Um, And I'm grateful that they're older now too, because they would be a part of any of those conversations should it end up in the court system. But um, I live in fear of that in a way that he doesn't have to. Mm -hmm. Because if I went after him, he's also a physician. If I went after him, he would Mm -hmm. be safe. I would not be. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. I I try to always lead conversations with the issue of access because you know the point is not the substance itself but you know why do people use it what do people use it for and just like Evan like you said the second the moment after you tell people what you do usually the second reaction is oh actually I've been having trouble sleeping too or oh, actually, I I have this injury, you know? And so, um, yeah, I try to put the focus on, like, it's really just about relieving suffering, you know, all types of suffering in this world um, and quality of life, you know, whether that's, you know, everybody's a combination of medical and recreational use, no matter what you consider yourself to be. And so I think there's so many universal needs and wants around cannabis and hemp which is naturally legal now in like you know full spectrum um so that you know you find that a lot more people actually are curious about it if if they are skeptical or or uh, against it and and share those common needs even if they're not ready or not wanting to to use it themselves true thank you um for me i'm a little bit um more aggressive with it. I mean, not aggressive, I would say assertive. Um, I I think I used to be a little bit more reactive at the beginning of my like cannabis journey um, because I mean, I'm still as passionate, um, but I am trying, I try not to think in absolutes and I try to see, you know, both sides and like understand where the other person's coming from. Um, But I'm kind of, I'm very open about it. I had to being, again, being a military spouse, I had to talk to my spouse about this and how this could, you know, me being open about it, impact his career um, because he is under federal law. 
-hmm. I am not as a spouse. I even had him call the JAG office and talk to one of the JAG officers to make sure that we were covered and that we were safe uh, in that regard. Uh, fortunately, I'm grateful to be in the position that I am, um, that I don't have, you know, that I'm uh, still at risk federally, but, you know, statewide, I'm good. Um, but I'm pretty open about it with most everybody. I'm really involved with the school district and the school system here. Um, can't really get away with it because I have a whole sleeve and I have cannabis leaves and mushrooms like right on my body. And I kind of did it on purpose because I want people to know who I am and what they're getting when mm -hmm. they see me or see this and know, and then I don't even have to say it, but I will openly talk to people about it. And I, you know, I, again, I try not to think in absolutes. I try to be balanced and listen to their concerns and, you know, some of the uh, stereotypes that they have and kind of talk to them. Um, honestly, I would say the the most difficult, and it wasn't really even that difficult because I'm 42. I'm about to say my parents. I have um, pretty conservative parents, grew up um, going to church, you know, but yeah, all the things uh, in the South. And um, that was actually, I was a little bit more hesitant and weary about being open to them about it. But honestly, um, I will tell you an example. Um, I put my son to bed one night. My mom was calling and my time to go and, you know, vape or smoke is when my kids are in bed and it's time for me to turn down and relax and have time to myself, you know? And so my mom was calling and I'm like, but I was going to go do my thing, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, but you know what? And then I said, wait a minute, why can't I talk to her and do, mm -hmm. do my thing and see what she says and not mm -hmm. even tell her that I'm, you know, vaping. And so I went and I started talking to her and she saw me and she said, well, you know, what is that? And I said, it's my, my vaporizer pen. Um, it's for cannabis. And so she started asking me questions and we just sat there and talked on FaceTime and over a course of 15 minutes, she saw such a dramatic change in how tense and uptight I was and how over 15 minutes I just relaxed and I got to the point where I was making her laugh so hard because I was being <laughs> silly and funny. And I think that moment she realized the benefits of cannabis and how it helps me. And from then on out, she's been very supportive. Um, and I've been so thankful that my parents have been very supportive, but both of my very conservative parents are very supportive of my use of cannabis and, and what I want to do in the industry. So I'm, you know, very grateful for everything that I have. Excellent. So that's public facing. That's how we present or talk to the public about it. I'm really curious about the conversations with your kids, you know, because I imagine either it happens by chance, you know, they walk in on you and you have to have a conversation <laughs> or something happens and you need to have a conversation or you just decide, hey, it's time for what reason that you decide. So um, do you mind? opening that door a little bit into your private life and telling us how, how did that go? How does that go? Or is your decision not just, just to not have that conversation yet? I think I'll okay. share. Um, so because we have a, a good metaphor that every time I share it with folks, um, they kind of go, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so, um, you know, and, and I put it in the context of all adult activities. So the same is true for sex. The same is true for, um, you know, and I tell my, our family has a history of alcoholism. And so I say the drugs you are not allowed to try is cocaine and alcohol. Also, we all have ADHD, all of us, both of my parents <laughs> did even. And I say, you know, these things that affect dopamine uh, uptake, you don't, those aren't for your brain at all whatsoever. But, you know, when you do try things, your brain is mostly done cooking at 25 and it's, you know, still a little plastic, but you know, wait until you're 25 if you can, because it's like those trees that grow in the wind where the tree still grows, but if there's lots of wind, heavy wind at it, it'll start to grow kind of sideways and a little bit different. Um, and so you don't want wind on your tree until it's strong and big enough to, to have the wind pass through properly. Now, then also in our family, we have to have the caveat of, um, however, some kids need it for medicine um, and their brains are already doing something different. And this is the medicine that helps keep their brains staying as close to typical as possible. Um, and, and they really got that metaphor at a very young age. And, you know, now they're older that we can have really frank conversations about it. And, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> when we started talking about the addictive properties of sugar and how dangerous sugar is compared to something like it, they were really upset about that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> 
<laughs> like, no, sugar's fine. Sugar's, I was like, guys, it really is not. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, they get it. And um, they don't like, um, they're comfortable with it around the house, but it's interesting how the messages they get outside of our household um, really do also impact how they feel about it. So, um, you know, some, it used to be on a Sunday afternoon, I'd like to grind up and because I like to sm consume by smoking a joint, um, you know, and roll some joints. They don't ever want to see that. Somebody, one of them walked in once and they're like, mom, mom, you shouldn't be doing that. I was like, it's not for you. <laughs> and, you know, but they still, they don't do it. So now, you know, we understand that I make sure I do those things on my own time. They don't like seeing the paraphernalia out at all. So I make sure that those are all put away and, um, and yeah, the 19 year old who's almost 20 has started to get a little bit curious, um, which I kind of feel like that's that's a new area. So I'm kind of curious to hear your your all thoughts on, you know, what that is, because, you know, young adult. We got to be by then. Right. We've got yeah, to yeah. Where. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And actually kind of mature for where we, yeah. where we were like 20s a little late, I think almost, you know, um, but he's also the one with, um, who's on the spectrum. So he has autism spectrum disorder and, you know, I'm in that spot where, gosh, I wonder if maybe it could be helpful for him sometimes. And, um, yeah, so it, haven't had that conversation yet. So. Cool. Evelyn, I think you were about to say something too. Um, well, good luck. And thank you for that metaphor. I'll try it. Um, I, I was saying that I approached it very much like the sex conversation, avoidance, right? Like I don't, like you're 13 and in my head, she's still a little girl and I've had to remember, okay, where were you at 13? And where were you in the, like going into high school? Where were you in the ninth grade? And knowing that the ninth grade is only like three months away for her and needing to reapproach how you know how I approach her as a human now, not as a child, um, and so I I still try and keep the the physical action of me consuming out of sight. She's gonna smell it though. I've crossed that that boundary and that barrier. Luckily for me, her father consumes, and so he had already already you know exposed her and so in in me trying to keep my image and my reputation I would keep it private and I'd close my door and I think that she was so curious that she would just come in and and I'd, I'd get upset because I'm like no my door is closed you know what I'm doing we've already mentioned that and, and now you want to see and you know and I roll up right here at my desk and I promise as soon as I get out the grinder and I, everything is good here she comes and I've got a life. <laughs> what do you want? And so now I make sure to, to close the door, but we, ha we have had to like come to a term so that she knows that the cannabis and the coffee makes me happier. It makes me nicer. It, you know, it allows all of these other things. And so um, I don't feel judged by her, um, but I do feel the need to have these conversations that I haven't had yet about consumption i'm definitely going to use the wind and the tree um and the brain metaphor because i feel strongly that you should wait i do have a stepdaughter though that's 18 and she consumes and her parents allow her and it wouldn't be my choice um but i do recognize that that is just a normal progression of cannabis use in our communities prior to legalization and now it's legal so we should only assume that the children will be more curious be, more, it, they'll have more access to the plant and just wanting to prepare her as much as possible for uh the world and how cannabis as much as i love it and as much as i you know really enjoy this plant it didn't help me in college um, it didn't help me get my essays written. It didn't help me graduate any sooner. And so wanting to make sure that, um, and neither did alcohol, right? So just just wanting to to make sure that I always keep keep it aligned with, I love it, I enjoy it, but it's for these purposes and uh, and hope that I can slow down the process. Cool, thanks. Evelyn, I hear you when you're like, you're switching from talking to your 13 year old as a child versus as a little bit more of a 
an adult that I feel that <laughs> so much. I am my, my daughter is 12 and she's turning 13 in a few months and it really has shifted so much. It's, it's a weird place to be. It's kind of a hard transition. Social media. It's social, mm. wow, just gonna, it's social media because they, they already know more than what we think they know. Mm. Also. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah. it's, change our lives <laughs> yeah I, gosh I'm like it's gonna take a lot of cannabis to get me through these middle school <laughs> and high school years um I, my husband and I actually take a really um we're very open um upfront and scientific about alcohol sex cannabis all of it for my eight-year-old's too young but my 12-year-old for sure we've already had conversations um, I kind of just tell her, you know, the same thing, you know, Caitlin is saying your brain is not fully formed until you're 25. There's so many emotions and things going on in your body and your, your brain that mixing a substance in with that, um, could have a lot of negative outcomes. Um, but yeah, we take a pretty, I think it's a, for, for us, I think we're just trying to give our children all of the knowledge, um, and information that they need to make informed decisions, you know, to be safe and healthy. So just laying it out for them and telling them how it affects the brain before you're 25. Um, but also same with alcohol, it should be treated the same, telling them that there are substances, uh, lots of psychoactive substances, including caffeine and tobacco and all these other things, and that they're just more for adult use only. Mm -hmm. um, but for me and for us, it's it's not a matter of if they are in a situation, it's when, right? Whether they're, you know, 14 or 21, 25, um, you know, as a parent, I just, I want to give them all of the information and knowledge that they can use to make good decisions. Um, obviously, advice, but not being too, you know, controlling, because everybody knows the more you try to control, control yeah. The more, the more that they're going to push away and fight. Um, so yeah, I think just being realistic, um, scientific and, and realizing that it is a matter of time when your child is, you know, going to be in that situation and just, yeah, letting, helping them make informed decisions. For me, um, I think, so I have a 10 year old daughter in fourth grade. And I think one of the, one of the things that's always been really important is to show her that I'm not ashamed of being, of working with the plant, being in this industry, using the plant, helping other people access it. So that was always my, like a huge thing. I want to show her that I have no shame and you should not be ashamed of me either. You should be proud of me, you know, and my role, and my role in this. And so I, but I think a big part of that is that beyond how much we try to educate them, it's the example that we set to show them that intentional use is possible responsible use is possible and this is what it looks like and that you have a you know imperfect but you know like dependable parent you know that that consumes um and but at the same time i always try to show her the polarity of how any anything can become destructive and addictive you know whether it's federally legal or not, or even if it's the way we relate to food, you know, or, or anything in our life or, or phones. And so, because she, she, even the language, like when children are learning context and language, you know, she'll notice, oh, well, why does that thing, why is that thing called the drug? Or like, why is the drugstore called the drug or, you know, pharmaceuticals and all this. So sometimes they, they are the ones noticing all the contradictions or the or the language that is used and you know and she's like oh well then why are they calling cannabis a drug and and so one one thing i do too is whenever um we get testimonials from people using you know our, our products like i i have her read them because they are so powerful and it's not me trying to tell her my opinion or my story i have her read the impact that it's making you know whether it's like an elderly person or um, of course, I'm my I'm my family's dealer too, right? And so, like, I have, I have ants they can't sleep, and then they're like, "Oh my god!" Or, or neighbors that, you know, are hiking when they're in their seventies. So, I want to hear. I want her to not just see its impact in my life, but in other people's life in society, and for for better and for worse. Like, I want I want her to understand, 
you know, overdose in our society. And, and so to fully embrace the full spectrum of how it's what you make of it, you know, but there is always a path to do it responsibly and intentionally. I, well, Sue, I will tell you, you are also my dealer amongst um, my suburban oh. moms. Yeah, I, well, I'll start you. with polite when anybody starts the question, Aww. oh, I can't sleep or thank this or that. So I was much. like, that okay, means some polite lot. tincture. And for women my age, 40s, I always say start with CBG because I am yes. confident yeah. there's something special there yeah. uh, that I would love for somebody to do more research on. But um, yeah, it's, it's, the plant is so um, misrepresented, you know. Mm -hmm. When, and, and when you when you start to learn about the science of it, of how if I if I'm not mistaken, THC is really the only um, intoxicating mm -hmm. compound. So it's like one I don't know one millionth or one thousandth of all the compounds in this plant, and yet that is what has defined it, you know, in our modern society. And and that's that's not okay to me, you know. Like that's that's so that I think that's part of my mission to. I want to talk about access. It's you know, I, I welcome skeptics because I'm driven to win them over. You well, know, this, I'm like, this I'm going to try this. And then you tell them yeah. what you think, <laughs> because if it helps you, they can't argue with it. Do you ever feel like, um, you know, off of the movie, um, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, where he's like spraying Windex. That's what I felt oh, like. And I'm like, uh, somebody's like, literally, oh, I, I'm like having it's, this it's issue. It's my family like, custom. It's literally my family. family. Like my, even my daughter, if she has a burn, I put it on her, you know, and she herself sees how it's relieving the pain like you know so i it's literally my family's my family's windex like I, they make fun of me because i was like oh let me guess you're gonna put cannabinoids on it you know yeah. no and so I, it works it works um i also yeah. just want to say a little piece of something too um because i think this part is important as well around stigma i am also very honest with my kids that when you are an adult this is really fun when it's responsible it's this is a fun thing to do but once you're an adult um and again this is not just about cannabis but you know a variety of other things including sex and you know just right. these are adult things um that if you are responsible about it until you get there can and, and will be lots of fun for you there was another great um somebody else had a really really great idea and i can't remember who said it but we don't uh, um obviously not in washington state because it's illegal to grow your own plants, but I also heard somebody suggest that if you do live in a state where you you can legally grow your own cannabis, another way to teach your kids is to plant it next to a tomato plant and let them mm -hmm. grow and watch them grow and, and help them understand that it is just a plant. Um, but I do, Sue, you were totally spot on with, you know, being proud, you know, and letting them not be ashamed of that because my daughter, actually my daughter is not, she, the resource officer at her school, um, they were doing a, a session on THC and vaping. And so I was trying to prep her for it and say, hey, you might hear things that go against what I've said. Mm -hmm. And and then we, I started talking to her about our society and how it's been demonized and the history and, and all this stuff. So, um, you know, she was getting prepped up in the morning. Of, I was like, hey, well, you know, just let me know how it goes. And she was like, well, I'm just going to tell him. I'm like, okay, calm down. <laughs> You don't need to get into a debate with the school resource officer saying that you might. I kind of want to see that though. Yeah, I know, right? I was like, <laughs> he might. You might hear things that go against, you know, what I've yeah. said, and that's yeah. okay. And you can just come and talk to me, and we'll discuss it. Or if he has questions, let him. I'll talk to the resource officer. I don't mind. Um, so she is very. She does not. She's. You know, she knows I use it. Um, I don't openly use it in front of her. Uh, I've converted my walk-in closet into what my husband calls the Zen Den. Um, <laughs> that's where I have all my stuff and that's where I decompress. That's where I read. And so my kids know that when I'm in there, that, you know, it's my space and it's my time. If they need anything, just not. But mm -hmm. um, I love that. Yeah. Point out that there's nothing to be ashamed of. There really isn't anything to be ashamed of. It's a plant. It's has medicinal properties. Um, it's less addictive and less dangerous than alcohol. So, you know, it's, yeah. So, and, I, and I'd like to follow up on that. Uh, but before we talk about how your t kids speak to other members of the public and if you have any agreements <laughs> or guidelines on oh, that, Lord, we don't really know what that. they say when we're not but around. A couple <laughs> good points. Uh, good news is CDC came out with a report just recently and teen use is down by about six percentage points since legalization. Mm. So I know often that gets held over our head or, or um, insinuations that what we do drives to more teen use and that's just not proven out. 
uh, state to state, it's not proven out. Two, um, thanks in large part to the Cannabis Alliance, um, patients who are patients who are authorized and allowed to grow plants now are not um, are now protected from arrest. Is that that's correct, right, Caitlin? Yes. Um, on Thursday, I got to stand behind uh, Governor Jay Inslee while he signed into law arrest protection for all Ooh. patients in Washington State. So one pretty emotional. We've been working on it for about four years, um, and it's sort of astounding that it wasn't in there to begin with. Right. Um, but uh, we finally got that one done, and that feels really good. And so, wanted to shout out a couple bits of good news, and then circle back to to what guidance or conversation have you had with your children about how we speak about the plant outside of here? Like we know we have opinions about the plant. I've been open with you, or it sounds like most of most of you have had those kind of conversations. But then, how that comes up in school is outside of your per, you know, outside of your ability to manipulate that conversation. Do you give them any guidelines or their expectations for how they share or don't share outside of the house? For me, Instagram ruined it. I, I am just the weed lady. <laughs> <laughs> And I hope that later on that, that makes me the cool mom or or, or so. Um, my mom was a bartender my entire life. And so I, I, my mom is the equivalent, right, of the, the liquor lady. And so we would sneak, you know, the vodka and then pour water back into the bottle or I'd sneak it out. Um, and I didn't feel ashamed. I didn't feel like I didn't. And so I'm trying to... to uh, I'm I'm trying to remember those days, right? Of and and hoping I pray that she's not at the age of sneaking my weed out the house. I do realize that I'm on the cups of probably needing to put it away because I don't put it, it's in, it's everywhere in my room. Um, and it's in the refrigerator because I drink can and I drink all of these. So she knows if it has the CA warning label mm -hmm. not to touch it. And her friends have to know when they come over if it has the label not to touch it. Um, and so, and then I'm very nosy. So I'm like in her in her messaging. And I don't know that she's ashamed. I don't, I, I think it's cool for her right now. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I, I think so, um, but we'll see. I just hope that I'm not like the weed lady and we can go to Venice's house to get our mom's joints out, out of the ashtray. Like I don't want to do that, but also recognizing that I definitely snuck my mom's liquor out the house I you know I was making cocktails by the time I was 10 12 you know I could mix a vodka and grapefruit easy over ice um and so I you know you just hope that your children use discretion mm -hmm. Yeah, and in our house with um, autism and ADHD, impulse control is just not a thing I can expect. And so what's going to come out of their mouths is just going to come out of their mouths. <laughs> and and like I said earlier, you know, it is protective for me to be public and, um, you know, and I'll just take it as it comes, you know. And I imagine there's some uh, peace of mind if you can get to that point of letting it go and dealing with it as it comes. Because I imagine that could create a lot of anxiety otherwise. I, I, I hope that, you know, we, we talk about how kids are actually a lot smarter and more capable of understanding complexity than adults often give them credit for. And so it's like swearing, right? It's like, I, well, my sense, maybe I live in a more liberal place, but it's like swearing is not as big of a deal as when I was a kid, you know? But it's still children have to understand like when it is appropriate, when it's not, how to read the room of people that may be a lot more judgmental about it versus not. Um, but also learning that, you know, just because someone swears it doesn't mean they're a bad person, right? And in the same way, just because someone uses a certain, you know, substance or medicine or like it doesn't define whether they're the their character, you know. Um, and so it's not always easy, but I think again through through meeting different types of examples of people and context, like they can they can start to understand the nuances of you know the the morality placed on it and 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 the appropriateness and and 
my my hope is that because like I remember when I when I first started drinking with my cousins and I thought that was so ideal because it was like a it was a totally safe space super fun because it's all my best friends are my cousins but I never felt like the pressure to like binge drink or it was just a totally friendly family safe space and I knew that if something happened they I would be safe and so hopefully like if we take the rebellion part out of it it might have the opposite effect where they're like hey that's not a big deal I've seen that in my house since I was like a kid while other kids are like oh my god I've never been able to have this you know I, I hope it I hope our exposure as insiders has that effect where it actually uh takes away like the I don't know what the right word is like the the mystique or like the rebel appeal okay. of it all yeah what well, Bob Marley said teach children children the truth and these days I mean they've got yeah. access to more information than we've ever oh, had yeah. as a species of people yeah. and yeah. so if we do lie to them or misrepresent, we're going to get fact checked. Yeah, they they can right. smell it. Yeah, mm. <laughs> they fact check really quickly these <laughs> days. <laughs> yeah, my daughter is um just I don't I just unleash her on the world. I mean I don't she's <laughs> uncontrolled. I mean she's got ADHD. She's super eccentric and quirky. Uh, she the other day she her teacher said good morning Stella and she goes oh Miss Pruitt it is a heavy flow day. <laughs> my daughter is just y'all my daughter is uh, she just I just have to unleash her on the world I, I can't do anything about it but I do have to be intentional on what I say because they do parrot you you yes. know so yes. I have to you know be careful around her because she can just go off and you know I I, I don't I can't control what comes out of her mouth so I just have to be careful with what I say to her so yeah I wonder, and this is a question one of you uh, pitched to me, is the interest in um, the need for the industry to more carefully and intentionally uh, serve women's needs, women's health care needs. So it, you were all women before you were moms. Could you talk a little bit about that, about how, because we know this industry can be very bro culture, right? And um, and and sometimes even health issues get left behind in the in the hoopla of of recreational cannabis sales and marketing so could you talk a little bit about the um some of the things you might you wish the industry would consider when it comes to women's health yeah uh we already heard me talk about cbg and i actually just learned there have been some small studies but anecdotally in large ways um women who are starting hormonal changes in um, their mid to late 40s, CBG is extremely helpful to manage the ups and you know, mm -hmm. I see, I think we're all kind of close ish, maybe a little younger, but like, right, you kind of go from um, a fairly predictable roller coaster throughout the month to you really just you don't know even within a day sometimes and and you know and and i'm 45 so i know that i'm just at the beginning of it really you know when i talk to my my friends who are older and they're like oh honey <laughs> just wait um so i think that um in a medical system that doesn't really care about us to begin with um that there is this one thing in particular that could really help women uh i would love for that to be explored further um and uh Oh man, I had a whole other thought too, but um, yeah, that's my big one. Oh, mental health. That was the other piece to it because women experience mental health in a very different way, yet we are prescribed based on studies done on men for, you know, however long. And um, I think cannabis in particular, again, back to that CBG thing is a great um, stabilizer for us. Um, and it'd, it'd be really great if we could know more about that scientifically. I think statistically, like aren't women, we're like the fastest growing you know, cannabis consumers in certain states, we already are a larger majority than men. But if you look at kind of the representation and the marketing, you know, like it's not reflected, which we're used to. But um, but I think we should be a lot more demanding and a lot louder about, you know, um, being served. You know, and and I think it's a it's like a it's got two sides of the coin. Where on one hand, because we've been underserved by healthcare by this industry, um, we are the ones coming to cannabis to fill the healthcare gaps, mm -hmm. right? Because you know, injury endometriosis, all these kind of commonly undiagnosed 
or improperly diagnosed or un untreated conditions that we have, even, even menopause that we all, that 50% of the world will go through or goes through, you know, there's no good solutions for it. And these, but this is what is drawing more and more women to cannabis because the other options suck, you know, or have horrible side effects. And so it, it almost becomes like a, a good thing for the plant because it's, it's what's going to bring more people to it. And, and fortunately, you're in a position to have influence on the market, right? Within within your scope and 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 being in a, a position to do that, Evelyn, you as well. I mean, it's it's um, you're in a it's, position to uh, to speak to women from women from a woman's perspective. It's it's actually why I created the Weed Lady. My brand started off as eighty seven, and it, it it morphed into the Weed Lady because when I walked into the store, I didn't see representation of women and what I do see in the stores only focuses on wellness which which I know is what the question asks right and but I felt like going into the store if I was consuming it needed to be because mm. I like that's the only that's the only that acceptable the only, reason that was the only acceptable reason for my consumption was because I needed mm. to treat some ailment, which we all know there's so many ailments. I think everyone that is consuming is consuming for an ailment. But I wanted to create a space that it was also okay that I enjoy consuming, that women enjoy consuming as much as men for okay. recreational purposes. And that's that was the sole purpose behind the We Lady was making it okay for women to consume, even if they have not acknowledged any, you know, any ailments, any medical conditions, just for the sole uh, purpose of enjoying the plant. Um, and, and so I think the industry needs to do all of the above, right? Make space and talk about how it treats uh, women's specific needs, because it does. And, you know, and I'm, I'm approaching it and, and I know all of the needs that it, that it uh, treats for me. But I also think that the industry needs to do a greater job at allowing us to enjoy it the same way Bob Marley enjoyed it, right? Like Bob Marley and Snoop Dogg, they're not getting up there saying, I consume because I'm stressed out at the end of the day, or I consume because my children <laughs> are bothering me. They're just, <laughs> I consume because this is some good, this is some good flower and I love it and I enjoy it. And I wanted uh, the Wee Lady to be a brand that said that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, considering even that, isn't it true? My P, uh, I have a friend who's a PA, and she told me yesterday. I was I, I because I'm not. I'm 42, so I've hit that you know huge hormonal shift where I didn't realize I had ADHD, and all of a sudden I'm like, what? How? What? I I never had to deal with this before. But she told me that Viagra is covered by insurance, but hormonal therapy is not. That blew my mind that blew my mind and it sent oh, me into man. this like furious rage where I was like what what you know and um, Viagra isn't indicated for the development of cancer on down the road but nearly all hormone therapy is so. wow yeah I, I mean it just it blew me away and I'm so interested because I'm approaching that that age where I'm like okay CBG okay like I'm really interested but yeah there is a huge market that the industry is missing to cater to to women uh, I, it's a huge, I just think that people are, a lot of companies are missing out by not catering to females and in, in our needs. So yeah, it's, it's, a, I hope soon somebody will. Well, and I'll say something that probably doesn't need to be said, but it, every time it happens, I still like always, my breath is taken away that, um, uh, let's see. And we call it dude bro culture, right? That, um, you know, when I go to an industry event and, uh, brand is selling their product with uh ladies in bikinis and you know um that still is very very prevalent and um you know for a plant that really i find i've had the most equalized conversations with my male counterparts and my non-binary friends and like it's just really the thing that's supposed to bring us all together as community in a circle um if we could do away with that uh, objectification of others that'd be super no, thanks. I, I Across almost, the board, but yeah. <laughs> I almost brought up the girls, I call it girls on roller skates, weed, um, you know, and, and halter tops or whatever they dress women in at, at events, right? It, it's, um, 
thanks thanks for bringing that up which and by the way i women. love short I shorts and women. roller skates and that's fantastic and fun on a sunny day nothing against that at all whatsoever it's what it's used objectively and you know for marketing purposes oh i hear you want that caveat in there too and if i could add though the the we ladies pre-rolls are grind time boss time and break time because i'm in this industry with women who work hard every day we're grinding hard every day and I wish I could wear a bikini to work. It's not the case, right? And so this is supposed to be the, like what I'm creating is the cannabis for the CEOs, the entrepreneurs, the grinders, the hustlers, like all of the women who are getting up every day and managing this lifestyle, we consume. It's, it's I mean, it's mind blowing that I sit behind the desk, like with this mission and it's not like the mission of the entire industry. Like why? Why is what I'm doing groundbreaking? Why, like, why are there not other options? I'm blown away by that every day because I'm in circles with ladies like yourselves, you know, like, like I see it, like we're really working really hard and still like in spaces, they, they, it, we're still objectified in this space is crazy to me. Not only that, but we're also expected to do all of it still, right? All of it. And without problem, right? We're supposed to just do it all without any mental health issues or struggles. And we're just supposed to put a smile on our I still feel that way, right? Yeah. Like everything just keeps, and it's not being addressed. Our mental health, um, our just quality of life, generally speaking. So yeah, it's- I think there's a lot of, um, you know, just in, in the business, whether it's on the retail side or production side or product side, there's, there's so much exploitation. Mm -hmm of i mean people in general but um because of the prevalent you know toxic masculinity mm -hmm. you know I've, I've talked to so many women that have been bud tenders that just they just got so jaded by the industry because they that was their the easiest kind of entry point to to work with this plant and then just having the most horrible experiences and then becoming jaded and, and leaving the industry when originally they wanted to like help people and and so i think you know that's where it's it, that's where it's up to us to build community support each other and for those of us that are entrepreneurs to create cultures and teams where people can experience what they're what they're actually looking for you know and like healthy cultures to to further this mission that we're all in um, and like what Evelyn, what you're talking about, where it's like when we meet people like are here, we're like, oh my God, you feel so much hope. But then you also see there's so many people that are not don't don't have access to peers like this. And so how can we create whether it's literally like events or platforms or also just mentor and be there for other women in the industry um, who maybe don't aren't in a position to be an entrepreneur, you know? Um, and, absolutely. And I, and I recognize, you know, it's the female species of the plant. It's the female um, of the plant that is what everybody's enjoying. And I have a lot of faith in the spirit of the plant that uh, okay. she brings that female energy to all these interactions we talk about that we enjoy and the communion of, of passing a joint or the communion of those special conversations we have. And it will take all of our work, right, to, to make sure that that, that um, shines through better than it has these early days of, of legalization. But uh, I want to recognize you all for doing the work intentionally and just in your daily lives. And thanks for coming and sharing that spirit today. Um, I've learned a lot. I hope the people that view this will learn a lot and that will they will subsequently reach out to you if you're open to that. If you don't mind hanging back a little bit after this, um, I would love to just chat with you very briefly. Usually I save time for questions from our, our people who are on the on the call and I very jealously uh, guarded that time and kept asking you questions today. So forgive me if you were expecting to ask a question. We have run out of time, but thank you so much. We appreciate you. Much respect for what you do and thanks for sharing it with us here today.